Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Morning Show. I'm your host, Steve Anchor Star. Allison has the morning off uh, because she's in orientation right now. As you can see, we're still on the road. Uh, this is day two of orientation. We'll be done at uh, just two hours from now and then be able to get back to uh, things. She's finalizing her schedule this morning. So, so very exciting uh, for her. But let's talk about what happened yesterday in the market. Obviously, we've been waiting all week for the Federal Reserve to either raise or not raise. It was largely forecasted. It was expected initially 50 basis points. Then last week we started forecasting in the 75 basis points. And that's indeed what happened. Uh, so that is now official uh, as of yesterday. The market celebrated that, but obviously this morning the market is uh, rethinking that as it weighs the odds of a recession uh, coming in. So basically, uh, given back all of the gains from yesterday afternoon, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in and a little bit more. So we'll see how the, the day plays out, uh, could lead to new lows as they price this information in. What specifically I want to talk about today, though, <clears throat> is how this uh, increase in mortgage rates, actually it was the forecasting of it last week, uh, led to 30-year uh, mortgage rates to surge above 6%, which we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, so again, last week is when they started talking about the 75 basis point raise. The 30-year reset from that information from 5.5%, which is crazy compared to what we've we've had for a couple of decades, right? All the way up to 6.28%, and it's only going to creep higher from here. Is my, that's an opinion? Uh, but with the Fed raising rates, you know it's going to creep higher from here, right? Uh, so we could be seeing 7%, you know, and maybe in two months. Uh, we haven't seen that in a long, long time. So how does that affect overall the, the housing market? Well, uh, it's going to be a headwind for sure. There's two things that's going on. We have inflation making everything more expensive. Uh, <clears throat> well, three things. We have inflation making everything more expensive. Uh, so the houses, the housing market's been on fire, so the prices are higher. Uh, as far as affordability, people have less cash flow because other things in their life are more expensive. And if they've been saving their nest egg, you know, for the down payment for the house in the market, obviously the market, it's a sell everything market. Uh, bonds aren't safe. Bonds are selling. You know, everything out there is selling off. So when you have a market reset like that, really, it's a challenge across the board for everybody. So, uh, you know, right now, somebody said it like a week and a half ago or so, it'd be the worst time in history to buy. Uh, well, I don't know. That's an opinion. Uh, certainly, interest rates are going to go up. So that payment and all the math when you go to qualify, all of that's going to be harder and harder for folks. So I do think this is a significant headwind for the housing market um, in you know, local areas like Austin, Scottsdale, Atlanta, um, you know, Salt Lake City, Denver. I mean, there's places that are going to stay on fire <clears throat> more than likely just due to so many people moving there. Um, however, in the other places, I could see a situation where housing is going to sell off at least 10%, uh, maybe down to that 20% level, kind of like the market did. Nobody thought the market would sell off this year. It did. Nobody thinks the housing market's going to go down. I think it will. Um, so if you were to take, in, take a position on that, uh, but your, about your best way is to go out there and short sell some of the mortgage companies <clears throat> or some of the home builders. I would stay away from the builders because they're pretty locked in. But say you wanted to pick on a, uh, a mortgage company, how would you do it? Well, to short a stock, you have to be able to borrow the stock, uh, which takes a margin account. So you can't do it in your IRA. So if you're an IRA only investor, you're done with the uh, shorting unless you can find an inverse uh, ETF that's designed to short. You know, you might be able to buy that knowing like, like dig and dug. You can take positions on oil. Dig means oil is going higher. Dug means it's going lower, but you can do it in an IRA because all that's baked into the vehicle. I generally don't like that stuff and stay away from it, but it's out there if IRAs are all you have. However, if you want to short in a taxable account, you need margin privileges because you're actually borrowing the stock and you're going to turn around and sell it. So if you borrow a stock at 100, um, you are literally paying interest on that stock and you'll that information is available. You have to kind of get it out of uh, Schwab on how much you're actually pay <clears throat> paying in interest, but you have to pay interest while you've borrowed that stock and then you've sold it. Uh, and then of course you owe that stock back. So the analogy that I use for folks is if you borrowed a friend's car, uh, you're borrowing a friend's car to go do something. Yes, you do owe that back. That is, you, you know, it's not like you're not going to give that car back, right? So when you borrow, uh, when you borrow shares or you short sell, you're going to see it show up in your brokerage account as a negative, meaning you owe that stock back. So what do you want to have happen when you short a stock? Say you, uh, you borrow it and then you sell it at 100. Well, you want the stock price to go down. So when you buy it back and return it to the original person. Uh, you want it to be down at 90, right? So you sold it at 100 and you bought it at 90. 
which is the same thing in reverse from a normal stock purchase, right? Where you buy at 90 and sell at 100. It's just out of, uh, just a little bit out of whack. So if you're interested, if you're a current client, and you know, if you wanna do this on your own, you gotta do all your own due diligence, uh, check out this is Investopedia, it kind of walks through it at the pretty easy to understand level. Uh, if you're with me and you're interested in doing this in your taxable account, I need specific authorization from you before I start going short in your portfolio. Um, and again, this is not, I'm not talking overall market short. I'm not talking trying to make money on the end of the world. That is not, that's not my thesis. I think the, we're in the neighborhood of the bathtub for the overall market. What I am saying is that the housing market has gone on like a 20 year bull run. And I could see some of these names uh, coming in again, that's data of the builders, um, but in lots of other different ways uh, within the universe of, of housing to be able to uh, to bet against it. So that's what I have for today. Standard disclaimer applies to financial education presentation. So do your own due diligence uh, before acting on anything you hear in this, uh, in this presentation. And with that, I will let you go and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.